Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Yet again, we find ourselves in the best of all possible worlds, with a watch on the bench needing help. Let's get this battered warrior back onto its feet and return to its owner. It is running, but amplitude is a little low. The hour hand is snapped off, and when I received it, the crystal was off. We'll start, as usual, out of the case, hands and dial off. While we disassemble this watch, let's have a little chat about the owner. This watch belongs to John, who's owned it for over 70 years since the early 1950s. Given it by his parents as a birthday present, the watch's very first job was to make sure John reported on time for his mandatory national service. John kept this watch throughout his two years national service and continued to wear it during his subsequent educational pursuit. After completing his education, John enlisted in the Royal Air Force, voluntarily this time, where he served as a navigator. In this role, he had the opportunity to navigate several renowned aircraft, including the Vickers Valiant and the Handley Page Victor, both integral parts of Britain's V bomber fleet, as well as the remarkable English electric Cambra. The Cambra's development began in 1944, stemming from a requirement to replace the de Havilland Mosquito. Like this watch, and indeed John himself, the Canberra is still going strong more than 70 years later. It currently plays a vital role in providing re-entry tracking for NASA. John recently started wearing this watch regularly again, and unfortunately it sustained some damage while he was working on the engine of his vintage Mercedes. But it's nothing that can't be fixed. Right, that's the dial off. We'll take the dial washer in our wheel of now. If we don't, they'll drop off and we put the watch in the movement holder. The power has been let down. As ever, we'll get the balance out early. Mangled balance springs or snapped pivots are to be avoided at all costs. This watch was made just before shock protected jewels became commonplace. That will add a few steps to the service. We need to remove the balance wheel from the balance cock. To do that first, open the boot on the regulator. The balance spring looks good, nice concentric loops, and the balance pivots are in good shape. And we'll free the pallet fork too while we are here. The final bit of residual power is released. There's the corpse of some sort of tiny insect sitting on the pallet jewel, which isn't completely unusual. What is odd is that there's another one on the other jewel. Anyway, now we've removed the wildlife, everything else looks good. Now it's over to the keyless and motion works. Why do we always disassemble this side first? I hear you ask, good question. It's because there is at least one friction fit wheel or pinion on this side that needs to come off before we work on the movement side of the watch. The setting lever spring is next. This will give us access to the rest of the gubbins. The trick to removing springs is to not to try and remove them. Hold the long end as far into the tweezers as you can and shift the spring to release the tension. Now it may be removed. The yoke is a bit stuck. That's one way to do it, fling it across the bench. Show it who's the boss. Sliding clutch, intermediate wheel, and minute wheel can all move to the parts tray now. Crown wheel screw, reverse threaded. Ratchet wheel screw, not reverse threaded. Crown wheel off. This little steel ring protects the base plate hub. Ratchet wheel off. The click needs to vacate the watch now. Using as little force as possible with the tweezers means when things do try and escape, they don't get far.
Gently hold the long end, release the tension and lift. Barrel bridge next. Check to see if the screws are the same. Nope. Barrel bridge off and the setting lever screw can go too. Getting sticky, quick clean of the tweezers. Train of wheels bridge has reached the top of the list. Before we remove it, we'll take off the escape wheel cap jewel and may as well take the maze spring barrel out too. At last, we reach the train of wheels. Very simple setup. Four wheels removed in order. Second wheel. Third wheel. Fourth wheel and escape wheel. We're getting close now. Balance wheel bottom jewel, then one more job before cleaning. We must disassemble the balance cock to get access to the balance wheel top cap jewel. Everything has been cleaned. Let's turn this pile of bits back into a watch. We shall start by putting a drop of oil onto the balance wheel bottom cap jewel. Main spring barrel back in. Just inspected the spring. There was no need to replace it. A small dot of oil on the second wheel. Escape wheel back in. Third wheel, fourth wheel, and the second wheel. A little plop of blue grease on the setting lever screw. The train of wheels bridge. Getting all the pivots lined up can take some time, but never deviate from gentle touches. It'll happen when it happens. It can't be rushed. As usual, the escape wheel is the last to join the party. The escape wheel cap jewel also gets a drop of oil.
a little medium viscosity oil on the barrel arbor. Remember, we're creating a microscopic film of oil between two surfaces, not filling an oil sum. Less is more. And the barrel bridge, just need to remember which end had the short screw. More D5 oil in preparation for the next part. The crown wheel ring, more oil, and now the crown wheel. Click spring. Put the short end in place, then hold that in position while the working part of the spring is located. And the click, making sure the nub is sitting on the right side of the spring. Ratchet wheel, the square hub, click and crown wheel teeth, all need to engage. The pallet forks turn has come. As a rule of thumb, the further you travel down the train of wheels from the mainspring, the more delicate the pivots are. We're extra gentle here. Next, it's a simple task of, of putting microscopic drops of oil on the quarter of a millimetre wide pallet jewel. Pretty sure most watchmakers would be excellent brain surgeons or snipers. Let's get that oil distributed to the escape wheel teeth and then repeat another two times. And while we're in the mood for the little stuff, we'll get the balance cocked back together. These screw heads are 0 0.8 of a millimetre. We'll put the oil here, then poke through the jewel hole with this sharpened oiler. Capillary action draws the oil through to the cap jewel. And there's our circle of oil. With the balance complete, we can drop it in and see how we're doing so far. Kick straight into life. We may proceed with the rest of the assembly. More lubrication. Again, small amounts. We want just enough to get drawn through the jewel hole to create a small circle of oil around the pivot. Any more than just enough to do that is counterproductive. 
and more on the other side of the movement. And before we start fitting the keyless and motion works, guess what? More lubrication. Sliding pinion is dropped in. Some blue grease on the winding pinion, including some on the back where it rubs on the main plate. Some people treat the stem as if they're greasing a pig at the county fair. That's not needed here. Yoke goes in easier than it came out. Yoke spring is on the agenda. Calm confidence, gentle firmness of action, and everything will be tickety boo. Switch to steel tweezers to click the cannon pinion into place. Minute wheel and intermediate wheel onto their pre-lubricated post. And the last part of the movement, the setting lever spring. Let's clean up that excess grease. Quick check of winding and hand setting operation, then we can move on. The crystal has scratches on the inside too. We shall replace it. Time to bring everything together, including the new replacement hour hand. This watch was made by Relied. Relied was registered on the 25th of September 1937 by brothers Walter and Othmar Trebo of Rheinfelden in Switzerland. However, in 1938 the partnership was dissolved and the business was continued by Walter Trebold alone. The first signs of trouble for Relied arrived in June 1968 when Walter Tribold filed for bankruptcy. Relied limped on until February 1975 when the company was finally dissolved. Then in 1977 it was resurrected by Walter Jr. as Walter Tribold AGU Hanferbrick Relied. In 1984 the company was declared bankrupt and closed by the district court in Rheinfelden. So the end of Relied, no, it came back again later in 1984 and somehow staggered on until June 1993. If you would like your watch repaired or serviced, including the production of a short free video showcasing your watch's movement, check out the Gentleman's Watch Services website linked in the description. The time graph is lurking in the background, let's see how we did.
Right? That's it. We're done. Nothing more to see as you were.